Cerebral palsy is a disabling disorder caused by damage to the parts of the brain that control the muscles. It is actually a general term referring to a set of non-progressive neuromuscular abnormalities of motor control. These abnormalities are a result of damage to a child's brain during fetal development, the birth process, or the first few months after birth. Cerebral palsy is characterized by impaired movement and posture, and abnormal muscle tone and coordination. It may or may not also include intellectual and language deficits. There are three major types of cerebral palsy. It is not unusual to see individuals showing symptoms of more than one type. Spastic CP involves damage to the cortex of the brain, accounts for about 70 to 80 percent of cases, and is characterized by hypertonicity in certain muscle groups with muscle spasms occurring with voluntary movement. When both legs are affected, it is called spastic diplegia. Hypertonic muscles in the hips and legs make the legs and toes turn inward and cross at the knees. In cases where only one side of the body is affected, it is called spastic hemiplegia. The arm may be more severely affected than the leg. The most severe form is spastic quadriplegia, affecting the trunk, all four extremities, and often the muscles controlling the mouth and tongue. Children with spastic quadriplegia typically exhibit mental retardation. Athetoid or dyskinetic CP involves a damage to the basal nuclei ganglia, accounts for about 10 to 20 percent of cases, and involves the entire body. It is characterized by fluctuations in hypertonic and hypotonic muscle tone and continuous writhing, purposeless, uncontrollable, involuntary movement that interferes with any voluntary movement. Affected children have difficulty controlling their bodies well enough to be able to sit or walk. Because the muscles of the face and tongue can be affected, difficulties with sucking, swallowing, and speech are also common. Ataxic CP is related to a lesion in the cerebellum. It accounts for only about 5 to 10 percent of cases and is characterized by uncoordinated movements affecting balance and coordination. Children with this form of CP may walk with an unsteady gait and have difficulty with fine motor skills that require precise coordination such as writing. While cerebral palsy affects movement, the underlying problem originates in the brain rather than in the muscles themselves. Cerebral palsy is most prevalent among low birth weight and premature infants, with the tiniest newborns at highest risk. Some other risk factors for CP are vaginal bleeding during pregnancy, breech presentation, maternal infection, maternal fetal blood incompatibilities, and meconium staining of the amniotic fluid. The symptoms of CP are varied and may range from mild to severe. While mental retardation may accompany CP, many children with CP have normal intelligence. CP may be suspected in infants who have difficulty with feeding, seizures not related to fever, or developmental delays. Some children with CP are hypotonic and appear floppy. Others have hypertonic muscle tone and appear stiff. Still others exhibit variable muscle tone, which is increased at times and low at other times. Typically, the parent or care provider notices that the child does not achieve developmental milestones at the expected age. What are some specific signs that indicate cerebral palsy? Weakness in one or more limbs, standing and walking on tiptoe, an abnormal walking gait with one foot or leg dragging, excessive drooling or difficulty swallowing, and poor control over hand and arm movement. Besides difficulty with movement and posture, cerebral palsy can lead to further complications such as joint deformities or dislocation related to spasticity and nutrition deficits related to swallowing or feeding difficulties. Children with cerebral palsy may have multiple handicaps and may need long-term care. Problems include difficulty with vision, hearing, and speech, mental retardation, dental problems, and seizures. Cerebral palsy, difficult to diagnose in the first six months, is generally diagnosed within the first one to two years after birth. An initial medical diagnosis can be made based on the child's physical and behavioral signs, depending on the degree of severity. The initial indication is usually the observation of developmental delays, where the child is having difficulty in learning to roll over, sit, crawl, or walk. The primary care provider will assess the child's reflexes and will look to see if there is an apparent preference for right or left-handedness. Normally, most babies do not develop a hand preference until at least one year of age. Conversely, some babies with cerebral palsy will show a preference in handedness quite early, even before six months of age. Another important sign is the persistence of primitive reflexes. 
These reflexes are normal in younger infants, but are expected to disappear by 6 to 12 months of age. The provider will also take a comprehensive medical history and may use a CT or MRI scan to confirm a diagnosis of CP or to help rule out other disorders that cause similar symptoms. There is no cure for CP, rather the goal of treatment is to develop the child's maximum level of performance, assisting him to make the most of his abilities to achieve as much independence as possible. Even though the brain abnormality or damage that underlies CP is not progressive, some level of long-term care is usually required. The type and amount of treatment depends on the number and severity of the child's problems. Physical therapy consists of muscle training and exercises to increase strength, balance, and mobility, leading to greater independence. It also prevents development of contractures. Occupational therapy focuses on developing hand function, fine motor skills, and self-care skills. It can also include working to resolve feeding problems. Speech therapy helps the child speak better and improve eating skills. Hearing aids and eyeglasses can help correct or alleviate auditory and visual deficiencies. Eye surgery might be indicated to correct severe strabismus, while orthopedic surgery might be needed to release contractured muscles. A selective dorsal rhizotomy might be performed to permanently reduce spasticity, this improving the child's ability to sit, stand, and walk. During this procedure, some of the nerve fibers contributing to spasticity are cut. It is usually done when the child is between 2 and 6 years of age. Medications include muscle relaxants to ease muscle stiffness and anticonvulsants to reduce seizures. Oral drug therapy is usually not very helpful. Parental injection of medications directly into spastic muscles is more effective, with effects lasting several months. Botulinum toxin has also been used to manage spasticity. Levodopa is an option for children with athetoid CP. A new type of drug treatment showing promise in children with moderate to severe spasticity is a surgical implantation of a pump under the skin for continuous delivery of the antispasmodic drug baclofen. There are also several assistive devices helpful for children who have CP, such as walkers, positioning devices to allow a child with abnormal posture to sit or stand correctly, customized wheelchairs, and especially adapted scooters and tricycles. Your nursing care for the child who has CP must be highly individualized, related to the type of disorder and level of severity. Major issues are skin integrity. It is important to assess for redness or other evidence of pressure areas. Also keep the skin clean and dry and reposition the child frequently. Prevention of contractures or deformity through the use of splints or braces frequent changes of position, and passive range of motion and stretching exercises. Assistive equipment such as braces or walkers should be checked frequently for correct alignment and the presence and correct functioning of all parts. Wheelchairs and crutches should be adapted to fit the individual child. Postoperative care includes extensive rehabilitation as well as immediate care related to post-op complications such as bleeding, infection, DVT, and atelectasis. Feeding difficulties include poor suck and swallow, hyperactive gag reflex and vomiting. It is important to use adaptive devices as indicated and make sure the child is positioned properly with adequate support of the head and neck. It is important to encourage the child to be as independent as possible, using adaptive devices to facilitate self-care. Also remember that parents are typically the experts in issues related to the care of the child and should be a central part of the multidisciplinary team. For example, the parents will be an important source of information about what types of play the child enjoys. Play, both alone and with other children, must be encouraged as it is an important part of the life of any child. So is rest. Daily activities require the expenditure of a great deal of energy, yet the child with CP finds it difficult to rest and relax. You'd provide an environment that facilitates rest, limits overstimulation, and allows the child plenty of time to accomplish ADLs. Also, in collaboration with the healthcare team, you'd provide the family referrals to community and national resources that will support them and their child in coping with CP.